What's that? They can pin any crime on you now. For what? Because now they got your prints. Mm hmm. That's how it works. Is it? I... <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you're, not, you're not publicizing this. No. Son <laughs> of <laughs> so, a bitch. I'm not even wearing a bra. <laughs> Just advertise to everybody that's watching. Shut up. You are not going to. You're not filming me. <laughs> We're live right now. You're a son of a bitch. We're live. Yeah, well, you're going to edit that shit out. Don't you understand what live means? No, you're editing that shit out. <laughs> we're live. No, we're not live because you can we're, edit shit. We're on YouTube live. That's what I'm saying. Well, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not on YouTube live. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. You didn't say you were shooting. I did. I said I'm going to start filming. We're not on YouTube live. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I will turn this way up and then you're not going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Better fucking tell me the right answer, buddy. Which is what? That we're not live. No, we're not live. we're not live. We're not live. Good. You're gonna edit this shit out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, everybody. Iceman Five O here. So uh, we got my uh, TiVo tarantula. If you guys seen this, um, I showed it before. So here's my TiVo. This is not a pro, this is a regular. And uh, yeah, you can see, you know, there's been some issues up here on the cooling fan. Uh, you know, you just let this stuff hang. Here's my uh, my chain, the energy chain. Uh, I got a couple of um, these guys. This is like a new type of, um, it fits the same one, uh, but it's not all enclosed on both sides. And you just use a zip tie in that uh, hole right there. Uh, to cup to put it in I think I wanted to check and make sure that they're gonna work I think so and then I'll print some uh, black ones but uh, I mean even if I don't I still have the red ones so and then the other big issue with this thing is this thing this is the uh, I don't know if you can even see it this is the Titan extruder and uh, talk about a pain in the ass this thing's annoying it um you know, so you got to like not tighten all these screws all the way. And there's a hidden screw behind here. And then you see, this is all kind of loose and janky. So, uh, what I, what I did is, um, my Ender six has, you know, an all nice metal one. So what I did was I, uh, I went on, I think I went on Amazon or something and I got this whole, um, set right so it'll replace this i already kind of confirmed that it's going to fit here it'll be you know you can see in the package there's where the filament comes out and uh it's got this uh the spring loaded lever um it's this one's got this like uh plastic lever and everything here and you can see it just it just doesn't work great you know the splines aren't a great i don't know it's not good so what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that. And uh, the last thing is my Z-Adjust. I was having problems. You can see here the bed is like, I've run the screws all the way down. These springs are maxed out, squished all the way. I need to raise this all up so that I can actually uh, adjust it. I need to raise up the Z-Switch. And while I was at it, I wanted to make it adjustable like the Ender 6. So back here that's kind of dark over here deck back down over here is my uh my z switch is somewhere over here where did i put it even i don't know where it is uh oh it's way down in the corner here you hear that Clickety, clickety. so um it hits the bottom of this um aluminum uh, rail so what i need to do is i need to unscrew this guy from where it's at and then put on the pieces um here's the other piece this one bolts to the rail Ooh. this one kind of like bolts to the rail like like this not this rail but down down over here uh and the bottom and uh so then this one mounts to this this guy you can see this guy mounts to the rail like this right over here 
and then you can use the Z, this big knob, to adjust where it hits on the switch. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I just wanted to give you guys a close up of this thing while I'm working on it. So we'll switch over to the action camera and uh, we'll finish it up. All right, we'll see you guys in a minute. Everybody, so uh, we've got uh, our destructions here. They show you how this basically all goes together, right? It's pretty simple. I already kind of fitted some of this stuff. So let's take a look here. We uh, got all our stuff here. Get it out. And uh, we'll take off the uh, the old one first. Pull out my Capricorn tubing and see how loose this is. I don't know. I don't know how it got all screwed up, but it just did. I had to use some Teflon tape to kind of wrap around the threads to hold it in here, and it's uh, it's kind of janky. It's kind of hokey. So let's uh, let's fix that. Now, uh, we got to unplug the uh, extruder motor. And then uh, we got to remember not to let this thing uh, fall down. We'll do the... I don't know if that top bolt is still in there. We'll have to look. There should be one more bolt behind in this area. Um, the Titan extruder, I like it better than the... Than the um, the standard setup that they have but um, and I don't think since we're using the same you know NEMA motor and everything my e-step should all be the same and everything uh, the only thing we're gonna do is just s swap that one onto this motor right and we got to change the gear because uh, it comes with its own does it come with its own gear uh, yeah comes with its own gear so we'll have to swap that off and that's better because it's a metal gear you know and it's it's just an overall better design i think and uh you know this one's like a plastic gear so we'll uh we'll definitely be like i said swapping that out so let me uh let me keep going here and uh That's done, and then uh, let's, uh, let's clip this off. Yeah, you can see, so it's, I don't know which one broke, one of these two. It's these, it's these two, I think. So we're gonna cut this in half. Okay. We're gonna cut this, where is it? 
Which one do I just cut? This one. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can see now we. Uh... <laughs> it's dropping everything. All right. So I cut those off. That one. And now we can do the same thing over here. Cut this one. And this one. And now we've got our two chains gone. And you can see these red ones. Like I said, these are pretty cool. You just, uh, let's see, how do these articulate? They're like, like this. So you just snap that one on there and snap this one to this one. Come on, like that. And we snap this one to this one. Like that, all right, see? Now the chain is fixed, and now I can come in here with two zip ties, and uh, we'll run some zip ties in here. Hang on, let me find some zip ties, and then we'll we'll make that. Uh, I mean, it doesn't need them, but you can see that if I pull up on the wires, it does kind of come out of there. Let me get some tiny zip ties up here. Right so we're gonna come in here, and uh, push it through there. Push that one through there, and then we're just gonna wrap it around and zip it, just like that. You can see now, now the wires are secured in there. We do the same thing with this one. We'll push the wires up in there. Make sure we get them. It uh, these line up pretty well. I got this on the, I got this one on Thingiverse. Um, this energy chain. Uh, it's pretty, pretty universal. Um, you know, you can make your own mounts or figure something out. I mean, there might even be, you know, you can use a, uh, a mount maybe for your printer and then you can print out this chain. Like I said, a lot of the chains are very similar. So that's the thing is that at some point I'll probably just switch this whole thing over to these or as they keep breaking, just replace them. Right. I, uh, problem with it. Okay. All right. Let's uh, clip these off. Yeah, the cool part about this chain is that, you know, you, you can make the whole chain and put it where you want it and lay your wires in. You don't have to snake the wires through here, which is what I have to do on these since they're closed on both sides. Like I've had to do that here. If I'm replacing wires, then you know, you got to slide them all out here. You would just cut the zip ties, you know, and just lay it all in there and then zip tie back behind you. It would look like this, right? It's like a zip tie here instead of it being a, a plastic piece. So, um, yeah, so that's done. You see, that's, that was quick and easy. Still, still works the way it's supposed to, right? So, I kind of like this thing. It's a Frankenstein. You can see I got every color, every different piece on here. You know, as I had different plastics, I just kept making them. So that's why I like it. It's like my Frankenstein. So I don't really mind that there's a couple extra different pieces on here. Um, so we got our, we got all this. Uh, let's get a sandwich bag here. This horrible thing. I'm not going to throw it away. You know, but I'm not going to use it unless I'm desperate. So let's get our, uh, let me get our Capricorn tubing in here. Let's see if I can snake this back through the wrong way here. Looks like it. Yeah, there we go. So now we can just kind of do this and we're going to push our Capricorn tubing down in all the way. You can see the old spot which is set. It's it's pretty good. They give you this little blue clip that goes underneath the uh, the thing so that it can't compress and it can't pull out. Um, so yeah, here we go. We've got our we've got it all set here. Uh, all I'll need to do is get a spool to verify that it's working right. We want the right amount of tension here. Um, you know, the harder you push up, the looser it is. So the the more you tighten this screw, the looser it's going to get. The less you tighten this screw, or counterclockwise, the more this gear is going to bite into the to where the roller is, where the plastic's at. 
so uh, everything looks everything looks good uh, the next thing to do is to move on to the uh, Z switch so let me uh, let me get this thing turned around so that uh, where we're working is in the light directly above us you can see again not a super bright uh, LED uh, kitchen light so all right let me uh, move these some stuff around get rid of some stuff and uh, I'll bring you right back all right hang on wouldn't be a project without a beer mm. Oh. We need to get our, uh, we we'll get our 3D printer, 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 3D printer pieces um, here, and uh, we need some nuts and bolts and stuff, and uh, maybe some uh, of these, uh, the locks that go behind for the screws. A lot of other junk in here, I think. I think this is what we might need right in here. So, garbage. All right. So, uh, what we want to do is we want to gain access to that area. So we're gonna take our our screw here and we're gonna bring the, uh, the gantry all the way up. I'll just go till it's over there. We don't want to. Maybe that's how those busted. I don't know. I don't print anything normally too tall with this. But, uh, let's see here. Okay. All right. So we got to take off the switch, which is down here. Loosen that. Okay. See, now you can see it's loose. I'm just going to get our. Uh, Pieces loose here. There we go. This is one of the acrylic pieces that came with this printer. Uh, I'm not even sure there's, this is probably the last original piece. <laughs> you can see I did all the X carriage, all of my Z, uh, everything, uh, even the, the Y carriage. Um, so this is probably the last piece of original acrylic from uh, TiVo. So you can see here we've got our, uh, our uh, mount, right? And we wanna mount it like, let's see. I think we're gonna mount it like that. I can hear it on off on off and we're still a little bit ways from the bed but the cool part now is that we can take this knob and we can turn it up right so now what we get to do is we're gonna turn this thing around one more time and uh, then we're gonna adjust all the feet here and uh, We'll uh, we'll re we'll re we'll adjust the, the the adjusters here, and then I'll go about tweaking it. So hang on a second. We'll be right back. Okay, 
So to adjust this, that's going to be a, it'll be fine. I just had this in the way. So we got to adjust it. Let's keep going down. I can't really hear anything. Let me get this thing set up. We'll, we'll plug it in here and uh, I'll do a little bit of playing with it here and we'll, we'll get it figured out. Hang on a second. Bring it back when we're done. Now we're gonna let that uh, hum away there. <laughs> and uh, let's, uh, let's go into the move function. I got two screens. This is the touch screen. I love this guy. Uh, it gives you quick adjustments. We can go to one, let's go to 10. Yeah, 10. And we'll push Z up. Okay, we'll go up another 10. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn everything on. We'll turn on the, uh, we're, you gotta adjust it hot. You gotta adjust with the hot end and the heated bed and everything. Oh, so the, uh, it's getting better. You can hear it. Preheat PLA. Okay, Let's see if we can. There we go. See, a little, as they say, percussive maintenance. <laughs> Smack on the side of the thing, get it to shut up. This thing runs a lot. And even though these are brushless fans, they, I mean, they're on, you know, hours and days and days. So. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let me wait till this gets heated up and then uh, we'll start adjusting everything and I'll bring you back, all right? And this will give us a little bit more light with the, uh, with the printer on. All right, hang on. We'll be right back. I usually use a business card. Here's one of mine, and I get it to where I where I want it. Well, we got so we got an auto home. All right, so that's I think it's under prepare. Auto home. All right, it's gonna go to the front corner. Here, let's listen. Uh, it did work. So. A little tight. Let's uh, back that up a little bit and we'll do another auto home. Dang, it's really pushing on that uh, piece there. We gotta come way up with this. And then do that again. Am I doing this the right way? No, I'm back. I'm making it worse. All right, let's uh, move axis. We'll go Z up, up, up. All right, we want to go down with it, not. We want it to touch sooner. Still under quite a bit of tension. Go up. Okay. We have to turn this. Quite a bit down. Let's try our auto home again. There we go. I might have to let it go down a little bit further. Ah, uh, yeah. So now we're gonna move it back up a little bit. We're gonna auto home again. We want to get it as close to the to the uh, bed as possible and then we can adjust the uh, it we can shim it from here right we can turn the adjusters here okay right here yeah that's pretty good so now we can turn these until it's just 
we're going to start there where it just kind of I can feel it where it doesn't push the bed down but yet there's some drag on the uh, oh yeah we got to disable steppers once you auto home with these TiVos you got to disable the steppers uh, otherwise uh, they're locked into position right there we go Yeah, I got one of these. This, these are pretty nice. You can put bearings in them, and it's pretty much adjustable. It's made by MakerBotMan.com. Okay, now we're coming down. We're gonna auto level. We should be pretty close. There we are. And then we're gonna give a look. Oh, <laughs> see, I forgot to plug in the. Uh... Damn it! It's not gonna extrude anything. All right, we're gonna have to start over here. Okay, reset. See, it's unhappy. <laughs> I always forget to do that. Um, okay. See, I did everything else but plug in the extruder motor. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, we'll come up, a couple of Z's. Whoa, man, it was stuck to the bed there for a second. You guys see that? <laughs> That's crazy. Mm. What the? It's pushing it the wrong way. <laughs> okay. So. It's the opposite direction. It's retracting instead of... Hmm. The question is how do we... Uh, how do we fix that? And the answer is... I don't know. I'm sure we can... Reverse the directions. Reverse the directions somewhere in the software. All right, well, let me figure that out and then uh, we'll get to it. I'll uh, show you it printing out the piece here, all right? I will right, we'll talk to you. Hang on. Thank God I got the uh, Ender 6 here, right? So I kind of knew that. That's why I didn't start messing with it until I knew. But this thing's been running a long time. So uh, that's going to be it for now. I mean, everything that I did worked. Uh, except uh, I needed to change this, the uh, direction. What I real, what we figured out here is that because the uh, filament feed is at the back instead of the front, the motor was going backwards, and uh, I really needed to communicate with this board. But I didn't have the. I have our, the Arduino software and everything. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But we're just gonna. I I do have most of the stuff. I got stepper drivers and all that stuff. So. Um, you know i can experiment with that on the side and uh, we'll get this thing back up and running but for right now it's uh mortos so all right everybody well we'll see you on the next one all right amazing everybody, here's an update i uh, i got it working um so the uh the main issue if you look at uh i was having trouble communicating even with uh this i use this program here called um print run called Pronterface right and uh, I was having trouble like even connecting with it here um, I don't I didn't do anything else special but when you go into Marlin the, the I'm using the Marlin uh, software Jim Brown easy fix and uh, under tools you got board for the uh, this is a MKS 1.3 board so you, you have to select Arduino Mega ADK and then whatever COM port you're on. And then down here, under Programmer, it says AVR ISP, which uh, I, is what worked for me communicating with the MKS board. One of the problems I had is I was using the, um, I was using a different uh, programmer uh, because I was, I now remember, I was using like an AVR programmer, just whatever it was, I think the ISP Mark II. So, but um, I was able to go in here and edit the uh, configuration. This is, I save you know my files here and I save them to Google Drive and I've got my Marla Tarantula Easy Config. It's the latest, it's my latest firmware. I wrote that down um, so I wouldn't you know forget. And um, I had to go back in here and there's one place to uh, reverse the um, direction of, of E0. So that's what I did. I just, um, you just comment it out and it'll make it go the other way. 
Uh, so that's what I did, and then I up, I uploaded it. Uh, you can see it's, it's not happy. The uh, what you call it isn't sticking to it. The uh, uh, hang on a second. Let's stop this. We'll go up. You can see it's not. <laughs> Holy shit! It's squirting out a lot of plastic too. Well, the point is, is that it's working and it's extruding and everything's working. Uh, so what I got to do is um, go in here and I may have to mess with the with the e-steps and the extruder. I think I got it set to 395. Although, it's um, let's watch it for a second. You can hear it going like spurting out of there. I don't know. We'll watch it for a second. It seems like a lot of plastic. Although the, uh, you know, bed leveling seems okay. Well, we'll bring you back if I, uh, if this thing does successfully print, I'll bring you back, all right? All right, we'll see you in a minute. Well, this, uh, this thing is squirting out a lot of plastic. Um, it really seems like you can tell because it, it just seems to be pushing out really wide and the uh, the part that I was printing seems is like spilling out and over um, so now I got to figure out how to we're gonna have to adjust the uh, we're gonna have to calibrate the uh, extruder motor and figure out how fast we need to go and everything uh, I had it set at 395 which is what the old one was but I guess if this if this gear is any a little bit different in size uh, it's gonna matter so it seems like we're extruding too fast too much so but other than that it's working so uh, thank God you know now it's just software tweaks from here so all right, all right. we'll uh, we'll see you in the next uh, in the next one all right easy so one final update um, what I had to do was uh, go into the uh, Marlin software let's, uh, let's see here do I still have it up? Yeah. So I had to go into the, uh, the Marlin software and uh, come down in here and uh, change my E steps. Um, I put it to about 100. That's really what the stock one is. So the thing about the, the Titan is that it's it's a multi it's a uh, it's a geared motor. It's like multiplied. So. Um, it uh, it was coming out four times more than it should, right? So basically, I had it. This is so the the Ender Six uh, filament feed is just like the stock one. It's not geared. So um, all we needed to do was set that back. I was able to program it, and um, I started printing out um, some panel washers. You can see. Um, the only thing about this one was the, uh, the supports. Uh, I changed the supports. I got another one here. Change the supports. And you can see that it then just kind of started sticking around there. That's all I got to do is just, just tweak the um, supports for this. And uh, this thing's back running. I'm relieved now. So I have two working printers again. So... All right, everybody, thanks for uh, sticking through to the end. And uh, I didn't want to split this video up, so I just, you know, made it one whole thing. So, well, uh, oh, uh, took the uh, bikes to the uh, storage space today. And I'm going to be uh, dropping that uh, moto vlog. And then uh, that's it for that until uh, till spring, um, you know. So, all right, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one, all right? Easy.